Welcome back to GearWire.com. We are looking at Sonar 7 Producer Edition. In this video, I will be looking at the step sequencer and how this works with your timeline. First, you want to have a MIDI track set up, and you want to load some sort of drum program. In this case, I'm loading Native Instruments under Soft Sense, and I. I'm going to go to Battery 3. Now, you'll see I have Battery 3 loaded here in my outputs. Just want to check to make sure that all this is set up correctly. Now I can uh, go to my step sequence window up here, or I can go to Views, Step Sequencer. And I can audition all my drums over here on the left. Double click to get the properties. You can change up note names, input, output, uh, what the output also goes to. So I could change all of these to battery three if I want. There are presets in here. In this case, the battery preset is actually already in here. Go to NI battery. Let's see what we have. Let's pick dance kit. Yes. Now I can also set um, individually what where these notes fall. So for example, if I don't want this to control my bass kick, I can take it up a note. And now these both control my rim shot. Or I can make two of these control my bass drum. That can be used to get really bizarre um, velocity differences if your master velocity, velocity is set to a certain amount. For example, right here I can adjust overall velocity. can also adjust the offset from the note of the instrument, which is very useful with hi-hats. So I can do that here, just offset it a little bit. I can also mute and solo these individually, but first let's set up a basic track. When doing basic sequencing here, we go to our, uh, we launch our sequencer. In this case, I want to have uh, 16 steps per beat. We have three per beat set up right now. Let's change that. That's four. And I can take it up to 16. Or that being the maximum, I'm just going to take it down to four for now. And in this case, each of these gets a kick. Let's play it back. There's a dedicated play button in here. And again, you can adjust individual velocities by clicking on each note, double clicking, and just taking it down. And then I can also increase these to make them more dynamic. And if I want to have, say I want to have like a little kick here at the end that doubles up a little bit. Just bring that down. Okay, stop that for a second. I can also put this into mono mode if I want. What this does is it makes it so you can only play one note at a time. I don't really want that on right now though. There's also portamento, which will become more obvious as to how that's used when we go over to bass lines. You can also adjust swing. And articulation. Now keep in mind also that these can be uh, muted and soloed however you want.
And remember, too, you can go as far as 16 steps up. Let's take that all the way. And you can scroll within this to navigate everything. You can also take your beats up pretty far, all the way to 64. So that's a really long pattern for sequencing. This is great for especially doing melody type work. But we'll get to that in a little bit in the next video where I take a look at how to make a bass line in the Sonar 7 step sequencer. We'll also take a look at how to use filters in uh, making your bass line even more expressive. But for now, I'm Bill Holland, and you are watching GearWire.com.